Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be doing another installment of our air quality series on filament. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this guy here, HIPS, High Impact Polystyrene. However, before we get started, I want to do my standard disclaimer. I am not a doctor, haven't played one on TV, nor do I intend on it, nor have I been in the medical profession. So this is not an endorsement of safety or uh, of health or anything like that. It is simply, I'm sharing with you my observation and my opinions on what I see of those observations in testing this filament. Now, what I want to back up and do is uh, talk a little bit about some of the questions I've got in the original ABS session that I did uh, to kick this off. So, um, again, because this is not a super scientific blind study. However, it is a good representation because what I'm trying to do in these videos is replicate the work uh, in my shop that has been professionally done in the scientific community. Because that's the other part. Uh, I know I got a lot of, well, if maybe, and there, there's no be, maybe, folks. I have a list below down to a resource page below where I, I list a number of the uh, works that have been done by professional scientific uh, organizations around the topic of 3D printing, the risks, and everything else like that. So I think that's very important to know that... Uh, you know, again, this work has been done. It has been determined that this stuff outgasses and, you know, certain filaments are better than others. And it's not my speculation, but it's my attempt to sort of replicate some of these tests and see a little bit of what is the impact in the home setting. Because obviously these were done in lab and more, you know, sterile and controlled environments. So can I replicate this in my shop? And what are the repercussions? Because one of the other things, uh, I also got a lot of feedback in that initial session. Oh, you know, look at how little bit that is and everything else. Well, you know, the analogy I want to share with, with you folks is, you know, if you smoke one cigarette in your house, you know, after a little bit that cigarette smoke is going to dissipate and your house isn't going to smell like cigarette smoke. But I tell you what, if you smoke in that house every day, after a while it's going to smell like cigarette smoke because that smoke is going to become deposited in your home. When you 3D print your home, that the, 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 the vapors, the particles, the chemicals, and everything released just don't magically disappear and go somewhere else. They settle into your home. So this is part of what I'm trying to share here is the... Um, you know, situation of when we produce these things in our home, they stick around for a while. And so, again, I think it's important. And again, I'm not trying to do any type of fear mongering. I'm just simply trying to educate and, and uh, provide awareness of how to do this, at least what I consider relatively safety. I'm not endorsing this as a safe means or any of this as safe means, but again, kind of sharing this. So, now with all that out of the way, let's get back into this hip. So, I was a little bit surprised by this, so I want to uh, also uh, kind of rewind a little bit to how did I get to hips? Well, typically hips or high impact polystyrene is used as a uh, you know support material for ABS because in solution it dissolves. So again, you can use a two extruder machine, you know, use hips in one extruder, ABS in another, print your object, uh, dip it in solution, the, the uh, uh, hips will melt away and then you have the ABS and you have a very clean part. And it's actually pretty cool. Uh, however, one of the things that I started using hips for is my main printing filament or a main printing filament, especially uh, in replacement of ABS because I found that hips um, prints better than ABS, or at least that's been my experience, especially for large parts. Now, before I ramble too much, what I'm going to do is I'm going to up in this corner put ABS. This corner is going to get um, hips, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as the course of my rambling runs out, is run both tests up here in the corner so you can see them before I start talking about them. Uh, because one of the things, I, I did the ABS on my DaVinci 2.0, I did the... Uh, uh, hips on my DaVinci 1.0, so basically the same printer, same enclosure size, same hot end, just one's got a bigger bed than the other. So uh, again, pretty good example of the comparison of these two. And I also started out with ABS because it's no secret from what I just spoke about earlier about all the tests, ABS was definitely the king of being problematic with regards to chemical release. And this brings me back to how I came to HIPS. So again, in my research understanding, ABS is not the best plastic to be exposed to while printing. I came across HIPS, which most of the studies claimed were better. Now, 
I haven't seen a lot of work on hips out there um, as far as you know a, you know good bad it is in the same family because it's high impact polystyrene and styrene is a carcinogen and it's not a good thing how much of it breaks down I really haven't seen any studies that go into deep detail on hips because it doesn't seem to be that popular of a filament or yet but again I've had good success with it and so I figured okay this is probably a safer bet than ABS um, because again everybody's pointing to ABS so I switched to this primarily instead of ABS for my prints and I've had a lot of success I've printed a lot of large parts with this and a lot of large parts outside and exposed to UV and they've held up very well for matter of fact um, one parts in my backyard that holds several um, uh, drainage pipes together and, and it's been out in the weather now for well over a year and, and still hanging out very successfully so let's kind of get to what we see in the meter so again I ran this test in and again these aren't just individual tests I've run all kinds of tests uh, repeatable tests I wanted to make sure that this meter was repeatable it is repeatable I wanted to make sure my results were repeatable they are repeatable I've taken this to other places in my house and I've tested it I've taken it outside and I've tested it I've invested a lot of time actually in this series of doing various tests so I want to kind of get that out there to answer a lot of the questions that came in in the first phase did you try it someplace else did you take it outside yes to all of that so what have I seen I'll do a bit of an overlay on the screen magic overlay or what I seen and I was actually very surprised what I saw with the hips so kind of long story short I saw no formaldehydes forming and you're going to you're going to see the same thing in, in the window if you're watching it I seen basically really no uh, total uh, volatile organic compounds I did rate it as a 1 or a 0 .001 actually I should say uh, because as I watch the frames it seemed to average above the error rate of 1 through 3 to a 2 so that's why I called it 0 .001 because I think there are some uh, uh, volatile organics there but not very many I was surprised and again remember this is the same part same style printer blah 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 so and, and again comparing the two now, when we start looking at, you know, PM 2.5 or, you know, basically 2.5, you know, basically 2.5 micron particles, uh, we got about 48 and uh, point, about 48 per cubic meter, which is less than um, ABS, but still, and also less than the standard of 55.5. So I marked it as orange because it definitely did not cross that threshold uh, in this time. Now, one of the things that I thought was a little bit interesting, so we did make 55 on the um, 10 micron particles. Now, the interesting thing is when, when I print uh, hips, uh, I, it produces a sweet smell. In, in which really surprised me because it's a rather you know, strong, sweet smell. And usually sweet smells aren't so good in the chemical world. Um, so I expected a little bit different here. Now, you know, and so I, it must be because in, in the in the 2.5 micron particles, most of the 2.5 and smaller particles bypass the nose and throat and go right, right into your lungs. So they're not really filtered out by your normal mechanisms where the 10 micron particles uh, typically are and, and, and probably are more likely to carry a smell than the 2.5 and smaller micron particles. Uh, so it has to be in this realm that, uh, you know, is creating the odor. Also, if you've noticed on the video as it goes through, uh, you know, the, the 2.5 and the 10 for quite a while are kind of lockstep and then it kind of breaks away into a difference as the print continues. So, which really tells me that, uh, you know, obviously, you know, the majority of the particles are ultrafine particles here. So obviously the um, bigger particles are very aromatic, if you will. And that's what we're smelling. Now, one of the caveats I have to, to mention here, and I've mentioned it in the other video too, number one, you know, just because you don't smell something doesn't mean something's there. You know, uh, carbon monoxide is odorless, tasteless, but it'll kill you. There's a lot of chemicals out there uh, that are odorless and tasteless. So just because you don't smell something, because that was one of the things that I really saw in the first series. Well, I don't smell anything. 
and, and especially when I did the thing on the resin printers, which just really makes me sl smack my head. Well, I don't smell anything in the resin. Well, just because your olfactory senses don't smell something in the resin doesn't mean it isn't outgassing something, because if you read the SDS sheet, it outgasses, and it outgasses carcinogens. So be very careful about this. Uh, again, and this is why I'm doing these, is understand really what's happening here. Because the other piece is, all right, we looked at formaldehydes and we looked at VOCs. There are other chemicals out there, for example, styrene. So we know this is high impact polystyrene. We know styrene is not good, but it's one of the things that happens when ABS breaks down is the creation of styrene. And so Again, there can be other chemicals out there. That's why I say this is not an endorsement of safety for this. I still use this and treat this as ABS with external ventilation. However, it's obviously clear from you know these statistics that this is producing less particle uh, particle matter. It, it's also not producing. Um, formaldehyde, which again, I was really surprised at the formaldehyde content of the ABS and that there was formaldehyde released. The uh, uh, total volatile organic compounds in ABS really didn't surprise me that much. The volume kind of did a little bit, but not too much. I kind of expected a lot of what I saw in ABS. I sort of expected it. I expected HIPS uh, to be very close to ABS and it's very clear from this test and the other tests I've done on hips also that it's not and so but again this is not an endorsement of safety because again it could be producing um, you know compounds that's in that part of, you know particulate reading that you know the meter is not reading because again to do this very super scientifically you'd probably want to take a spectrum analysis of the gas and you know that's released and look at all the different things that are in it we're only looking at a small subset of what's in those gases and again as I mentioned in the initial video what I'm really looking at is the particulate matter how much particulate matter is being released and you'll kind of hear me drone about that throughout these videos is the particulates and uh, Especially when we get to PETG, I'm going to give you a little, uh, you know, I, I did PETG and I, I really had to do PETG a couple times because it really surprised me. And we'll talk about that. PETG will be the next one I do. And again, I'm a surprise. So anyways, hopefully you found this of value. If you did, comment below. I'm always open to constructive criticism uh, and comments, you know, so, you know, please feel free to comment. Uh, don't forget the swag shop up there. And again, look in the description below. I'll have, uh, you know, references and things like that down there that you can access, you know, other studies, things like that, that back up sort of what we're seeing here and also what I'm trying to replicate. And I don't know if I already said it, but Swag Shop up there. Subscribe, comment. See you guys in the next video. Be safe. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.